In this video I will teach you how you can automate versioning of your Expo app using GitHub Actions and the release please process and you can also take advantage of the free 2000 uh, build CI minutes on GitHub. I'm now looking on the Expo dev page, the plans for EAS remote builds and uh, you can get off with uh, free builds up to 30 builds lower priority builds per month, up to 15 iOS builds, but uh, I need to warn you they will be very slow. If you want to change to usage-based pricing, it will cost you $2 per iOS build, $1 per Android build. And uh, beware that uh, by changing to the usage-based pricing, you will lose the free plan. You will lose the 30 low priority builds per month. I don't like it, not because it's uh, complicated, not because it's uh, expensive, because the GitHub uh, will be uh, more expensive uh, after a while. And also it is uh, complicated at first to set up, but it's just that I like my process that I've set up a bit more than using a EAS. And I'll show you the process that I use, so you can decide by yourself uh, which one do you prefer, EAS or something uh, like my process. I'll compare the EAS billing, so let's now compare the GitHub billing. If you're considering my workflow because it will be cost-effective or uh, easy, uh, no, it will not. If you're using GitHub Pro, or GitHub Teams uh, every month, you should get uh, free CI build minutes. And in that free CI build minutes, if you use a macOS build, it will use uh, 10 times as more GitHub uh, CI minutes. So if I have here 3000, it is not actually 3000, it is more 300. It says on the GitHub page, there's a minute multiplier. If you're using something else that is not Linux, your free CI minutes will be multiplied. Usually my iOS build uh, takes around uh, 30 minutes. I don't know why that much, but it takes that much. And with the free plan, I can get... Uh, how much is that? Round tail builds uh, I can get in that free plan. And after that, I will pay 0.08 per minute of macOS worker. And as I said, if it takes 30 minutes, it will cost me, it will cost me, I believe, uh, $2.4 and it is uh, 40 cents more than the EAS build. So if I were using uh, GitHub uh, to be cost effective, that would be a very bad plan. But I still prefer to use it instead of EAS. Sorry, I didn't calculate for the Linux, so if it was 30 minutes for Linux. Sorry, I didn't calculate for Linux. So if it took me also 30 minutes to build an Android app, it's 24 cents. It is a lot cheaper than EAS. So you have to decide by yourself what, what do you prefer more, to use EAS or the GitHub action. Making an Android build using GitHub actions uh, seems to be cheaper. As I said, my process involves uh, using GitHub Actions and the release, please. I don't need to worry about a bumping uh, version. I don't need to worry about a bumping application version because the release, please, and GitHub does that for me. And uh, it does that uh, because I use uh, semantic conventional style of commits. And those are kinds of commits that indicate what kind of version is next. Is it a fix? Is it a patch? Or is it a breaking change? So if you see a version like this, these uh, three numbers, the three indicates that it's a fix, two that it's a patch, and one that it is a breaking change. And with the breaking change, uh, usually there is no backwards uh, compatibility. So by enforcing a conventional style of commits, uh, release please will detect if it needs to bump 3 to 4, 2 to 3, or 1 to 2. I don't need to worry about that. 
I'd like to show you the workflow of my process that I use for continuous, I say continuous delivery of my Expo application to play internal store testing and to play console internal test track or to test flight. I always start when I'm developing a feature or a fix, uh, never mind if I'm working alone or in a team, I create a feature branch or a fix branch out of main production branch. And when I'm ready, uh, my features are ready, I create a pull request. That pull request, we do some checks, like perform some tests, uh, lint checks. If everything passes, it can merge to main. I need to approve the merge. If not, I need to fix uh, whatever was uh, troubling and push another commit, retry the pull request. And this goes in a circle. When there's a merge to main, my release please uh, workflow catches it and uh, scans uh, the last commits from the last uh, pull request and it scans is there a fix or a feature let's say it was a feature it will detect the, the, oh okay there's a feature and it will create a new pull request that i need to approve and in that pull request it will bump my application version create a new change log and i believe that's it i need to review that pull request and approve it Let's say I approved it, it again merges to main, and then again release please catches the last commit, scans it, and it text OK, there's a new version. I can continue with the second phase. And the second phase is whatever you have configured, whatever I have configured it. I usually configure in the second phase uh, to publish to test tracks, either to play console or to test flight. So this is what happens. If there's no new version, there's no new fixes, well, release please does nothing. It waits until the next uh, trigger, like a fix, feature, break it, change, or a new version, then it continues with its own tasks. Before all that automating and bumping Expo version, I like to consolidate my version. What I mean by that? If you open your Expo project, you will see four kinds of versions. First version in the package JSON. It's usually a placeholder. It's not used unless you publish your Expo up to some registry. And the version that you're interested in probably is the user-facing version, Android build version, and iOS also build version. So four kinds of versions. It would be really great if there was only one version. I rely on the package JSON version and I use it to define versions of my Android and iOS and user facing version. So let's import package JSON. Since I like to use, and I should use, there, this is semantic kind of versioning, it would be really neat if there was a library that can coerce the semantic version. And why do I need to extract the major minor patch? Because Android version code is numeric. So current version is this and android version is you don't need to exactly copy what i do but this is just to give you an idea i calculate the numerical version from the major minor and patch and my expo version is actually package version And I can reuse that for the build number, but here I need to set Android numerical version. And the last part is the actual incrementing. 
I showed you my workflow in a diagram and what I'm missing. I have over here the checks that, pre that are performed whenever I do, well, whenever I do a push or whenever I manually dispatch the action and what is missing the release please workflow. And this is an example of a release please workflow. Important thing to remember, it is triggered whenever a push to main is done. So in my workflow I did a feature work on some feature branch, I did a pull request and then I merged to main. That is when this action gets triggered. Permissions to write on contents a pull request, that is to allow release please to create a pull request and to perform some writes in my repository. Writes are version bumps and change log. When setting up release please, I need to set it a config file and manifest file. Manifest file is the source of truth for the version of in this project of the app. Manifest file is the source of truth for versioning. So unfortunately I have to have versions in two files, over here and also in this file. But release please will only look at this one. So when the release please decides, hey, it's time to bump uh, next uh, patch version, it will bump, it will take a look at this file, increment it, change it, and then change this property over here. Uh, next file is the configuration file and it's just a configuration of what kind of project is being bumped. In my case it is a release type of node. There is a preset in release please that when it detects node it detects OK. I should bump the package ASO version and I don't know what else it needs to do but it's different uh, for example for a Rust project, for Java project and all other kinds of release types. You can also set it uh, all kinds of other settings. What kind of flavor would you prefer when git tagging? Should the pull requests be separated? Or when the release please uh, does its scanning? How deep should it scan? In my case I set it to 20 commits that. And that's it. This video covers automatic versioning of the Expo app. What this video does cover is uh, how to publish to test tracks and to test flight because it will be a topic for another video. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching.